So the last time we were discussing norms and uh, matrix norms in particular. Today we'll continue our discussion on matrix norms. Just to recall, uh, matrix norm is a mapping from the space of square matrices R to the n cross n to the real number line R. And we say that this uh, a matrix norm, which is denoted by this symbol with three lines around it, this is a matrix norm if uh, for any A and B in R to the N cross N, it satisfies these four properties. The first is that it is non-negative. The second is that it's positive, meaning that it can only be equal to zero if the matrix itself is equal to zero. The third is that it's homogeneous. And the fourth is that it satisfies triangle inequality. So basically any ve vector norm I start with will satisfy all four of these properties. So if I think of an n cross n matrix as a big vector containing n squared entries in it and I define a vector norm on that, that will certainly satisfy these four properties. The only question mark is whether it satisfies this last property which is called the submultiplicativity property or not. So this is what we will examine today. So some vector norms are in fact matrix norms when you apply them on R to the n cross n, whereas others are not. So we'll start with the L1 norm. Uh, so remember that the L1 norm of a vector is the sum of the absolute value of all of its entries. If I simply extend that to an n cross n square matrix, then I would define the L1 norm of a matrix A to be the summation of all of its entries in magnitude. So the question is, is this a matrix norm or not? So the answer is uh, yes. Of course, uh, this uh, norm as defined here does satisfy the non-negativity, positivity, homogeneity and triangle inequality by virtue of the fact that it is a it is an L1 norm on in the vector space. So it directly satisfies those four properties. And so we only need to check whether it satisfies the submultiplicativity property or not. So I'll just write that here. One, two, three, hold because is already a vector norm. So now about submultiplicativity. So what I need to show is that if I take any two matrices and I find a b l1, this is going to be less than or equal to the l1 norm of a times the l1 norm of b. That's what I need to show. Now this quantity a b l1 is the sum of the magnitude of the entries of a b which is equal to sigma i j equal to 1 to n. So this is the sum over all the entries of this product matrix. But each entry in the product is the inner product between a row and a column of um, a and b respectively. So I'll write that like this. So if you remember, we discussed this different ways of writing out a matrix product. This is the way by which we write out every entry of the product matrix. A i k times B k j. This is the i comma kth entry of this product matrix A B. Now this quantity itself I can upper bound by taking the magnitude inside the summation. This is less than or equal to summation. Now, because the summation will go over i, j, and k, I'll just write them together. i, j, k equal to 1 to n mod of a, i, k, b, k, j. This in turn um, is less than or equal to, what I'll do is, see here it's index k and then there's k repeating here. I'll just uh, replace this k with an l and take the summation l going from uh, 1 to n as well. What I'm doing there is I'm introducing a whole bunch of 
non-negative terms into this summation. And so that can only increase its value. It cannot decrease it. So I'll write this as sigma i j k l equal to 1 to n mod of a i l mod of b k j. So this is a double summation over two indices. So I'll just make this a little neater. I j k l equal to 1 to n. Now this is just a size. So it, notice that in the first term it depends on i and l. It has no j and k in it. The next term has j, k in it, but no i or l. So this is actually equal to the product of these two terms, sigma i l equal to 1 to n mod of a i l times sigma j k equal to 1 to n mod of b k j. And this is nothing but uh, by our definition here, this is nothing but the L1 norm of A times the L1 norm of B. And thus AB L1 is less than or equal to the L1 norm of A times the L1 norm of B. So it satisfies submultiplicativity. And hence this uh, AL1 as defined here is indeed a matrix norm. Okay, so we can go to the next possibility. So we did L1, now we can look at L2. Sir? Yeah. The notation for the matrix norm will have three vertical bars, right? Why have you ignored the one, uh, one of the bars? Yeah, good question. So uh, it turns out that I'm going to define the L1 matrix norm a little differently in a in a few minutes um, once we discuss something called induced norms. So it turns out that this is not quite the definition of the matrix L1 norm that I'm interested in. And so I have used a different notation. So for these norms that I'm discussing here, I will use only two bars to distinguish this norm from another notion of L1 norm on matrices that I'm going to define momentarily. OK, OK, sir. So the L2 norm also I'm going to denote it with two bars because again this isn't quite the L2 norm on matrices that I'm going to later be interested in. But I'll define this to be. Sir, Is there another question? Yeah. Sir. sir, in the previous one you have written like AIK, BIK and you have introduced AIL, right? So what does it mean? I mean for every AIK you are replacing it with bunch of AILs, right? I mean you are adding lot of AIs. Is yeah. that what? Okay. Exactly. So you are taking AIK and you are adding some other like uh, AIs, right? AI1, something like that. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. There are many, many, many. Uh, I'm okay. adding n into n minus 1 terms into the okay. summation, which will uh, only increase its value. But they're all in magnitude, so none of them is negative. So okay. it can only increase the value. Okay, I got it. Thank you. So the L2 norm I define like this. So it's uh, so just like the vector L2 norm, which is the square root of the sum of the squares of uh, all the entries. I define the L2 norm to be the uh, sum of the squares of all the entries in the matrix, and then you take the square root. So is this a matrix norm? So once again, by virtue of the fact that it's uh, uh, the this is uh, this is a this is an L2 norm of the vectorized version of the uh, matrix. This is this will satisfy the non-negativity, positivity, homogeneity, and triangle inequality. Again, the only thing we need to look at is whether it satisfies the submultiplicativity submultiplicativity property or not. And again, for this norm, it turns out the answer is yes. So we'll see that very quickly. 
So once again, if I take the L2 norm of a product AB, this is equal to sigma ij equal to 1 to n. So I'll consider the square so that I don't have to keep writing square roots. So this uh, AB squared, if I show that this is less than or equal to uh, L2 norm of A squared times L2 norm of B squared, that's also good enough for me. So this is ij equal to 1 to n. I have to take the mod square of this term here. So I'll just write the same term here, sigma k equal to 1 to n, a i k b k j square. And now this is actually the square of the inner product between the i row of A and the jth column of B. And I can use Cauchy-Schwarz inequality here and write this as less than or equal to sigma i equal to i j equal to 1 to n sigma say k equal to 1 to n mod a i k square times sigma just to just for convenience i'll replace k with m and write m equal to 1 to n mod of b m j square so this is just from cauchy schwartz inequality then um, notice that when i take this if i take this uh, the the, the uh, if i look at these two terms this term has a summation over k but it has no dependence on j and this term has a summation over m but it has no dependence on i okay so i can write this as this is equal to sigma i k equal to 1 equal to 1 to n mod a i k square times sigma j m equal to 1 to n mod b m j square. These two are exactly equal. It's just another way of writing this double summation with the summation inside of it. And so this is equal to a 2 squared times b 2 squared. So it does satisfy this submultiplicativity property. This particular um, matrix norm is actually called the Frobenius norm. Okay, so um, I'll uh, maybe mention just one property of this norm. Uh, the property is that uh, this particular norm is um, uh, invariant to left or right multiplication by a unitary matrix. So one useful trick in this um, in this direction is that uh, this norm a l two squared is actually equal to the trace of A transpose A. Okay, so if you think about the entries of A transpose A, along the diagonals, you will get the sum of the squares of um, each column, the entries of each column of A. Okay, so I'll, because we are doing this online, I, I'll just maybe show you that very easily, very quickly. If I have A11, a12, A21, A22. Okay, and if I take its transpose and left multiply it, that would be A11, A21, A12, A22. And then if I look at the diagonal entries, they will be the first diagonal entry will be A11 squared plus A21 squared. The second diagonal entry will be 
a12 square plus a22 square. And so if I take the trace of this matrix, this is a transpose a. So if I take the trace of this, this is equal to a11 square plus a12 square plus a21 square plus a22 square. And so it is exactly this uh, Frobenius norm as we defined it here. So this is one useful formula. Now, um, what I wanted to say though, is that if, uh, if you have a matrix A and I write out its columns, A2 A up to AN, then if I uh, look at what this A, to squared is, this is actually equal to the sum of the squares of all the entries in this matrix, but I can also write that as A1 L2 norm squared, which is the sum of the squares of the entries in the first column of A plus A2 L2 norm squared plus, plus A n L2 norm squared. This is another way of writing it. Now, the L2 norm by itself um, is unitarily invariant, meaning that if I have, if U is unitary, then Ux L2 norm is equal to the L2 norm of X itself. The way to see this immediately is that, uh, recall again that the L2 norm square in the vectors for vectors, the L2 norm square is equal to X transpose X. So if I take the L2 norm of UX, that is equal to X transpose U transpose UX, and U transpose U is the identity matrix. So that's the same as X transpose X. So this is true uh, for any unitary matrix and for the L2 norm. Um, so we have that uh, uh, if I take the L2 norm of U times A square, then that is equal to, by using this formula here, it is equal to U A1 L2 norm square plus U A2 L2 norm square plus etc. plus U A N L2 norm square. So now I'm using the column view of matrix multiplication. When I multiply U with the matrix A, the columns of the product are equal to the multiplication of U with each of the individual columns of A. And so this, this is a, because this is equal to A1 square plus, this is equal to a L2 norm of A1 square. This is equal to the L2 norm of A2 square plus etc. plus the L2 norm of A n square, which is equal to the L2 norm of A square. So the this Frobenius norm is uh, invariant to left multiplication by a unitary matrix. You can similarly show that Um, if I have, um, uh, if I take U A V L2 norm square, this is equal to A L2 norm square when, or I'll say if U V are unitary. Okay. So basically, the uh, this Frobenius norm is uh, invariant to left or right multiplication by a unitary matrix. Okay. So the next thing I want to consider is the L infinity norm. We looked at L1, L2, and L infinity. So we are basically covering most of these uh, LP norms. Um, for P not equal to one, two, or infinity, it's a little more difficult to figure out what's going on. So we don't, and usually 
in applications you don't encounter those norms so so we don't worry about too much about those norms so this l infinity norm if i simply extend the definition it would be the max 1 less than or equal to i j less than or equal to n mod a i j the l infinity norm of a vector is the max magnitude entry and so i'm extending that and saying the l infinity norm of a matrix is the max magnitude entry across the matrix now is this a matrix norm so for this particular example it turns out that the answer is no so there's a so once again when you want to show that it's not a matrix norm all you need to do is to provide one counter example where it does not work and that 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 is enough so if i let uh, the matrix so if i consider j equal to the all ones 2 cross 2 matrix then j square what is j squared equal to is the all twos matrix which is equal to 2 times j so if i if i look at the l infinity norm of j as per this definition it's the max magnitude entry it is 1 but if i look at the l infinity norm of j square it is 2 which is not less than or equal to the l infinity norm of j square this was one of the requirements i mean this see if sub multiplicativity were to hold then the l infinity norm of j squared must be less than or equal to the l infinity norm of j times the l infinity norm of j which is l infinity norm of j squared but that is equal to 1 here uh, not bigger than 2 and so this is as as written here this is not a matrix norm however a slight modification to this norm if i define now i'm using three bars to distinguish it from what i wrote above if i write it to be n times a infinity n is the dimension of a it's a is an n cross n matrix this is a matrix norm so if i consider so once again because it's just a scaled version of a vector norm the first four properties namely non negativity positivity homogeneity and triangle inequality are naturally satisfied by this so the only property we need to check is the sub multiplicativity property so if i consider ab infinity then this is equal to n times the maximum entry in magnitude of the ijth entry of ab and as we wrote above this is equal to sigma k equal to 1 to n a i k b k j now first of all i i can if i re, if i take the modulus inside the summation i cannot decrease the value of the summation so it is less than or equal to n max 1 less than or equal to i j less than or equal to n of sigma k equal to 1 to n mod a i k b k j and that in turn is less than or equal to um, so what i can do is i can replace all these ai case with the largest ai k value the largest magnitude entry in the entire matrix that will only increase the value of this summation i can replace this bkj with the largest magnitude entry of the matrix b that will also further only increase the value of this summation and so that is less than or equal to n max 1 less than or equal to i j less than or equal to n of 
sigma k equal to 1 to n a infinity where this is the maximum magnitude entry which is the norm a infinity with two bars as I defined it here times b infinity. And now there are n such terms here, so I get an extra factor of n by removing this summation here. And so this is equal to n times a infinity times n times b infinity, which in turn is equal to the norm as I defined here times the norm as I defined here. Okay, so with a small modification to the definition, I can get uh, uh, I can get a, a definition which is indeed a matrix norm. Any other any questions so far?